Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. Um, we're into the early 50s still of these, and my cat's here. So you know you have to like the video, because you can see my cat's face. He's, he's here. We've got five albums to go through. Um, before I start the episode proper, though, uh, thank you to everyone who watched the Go Home Show. It was actually pretty fucking lit uh, for here to the moment, and uh, more on that a bit later when I've done all the albums. So I should probably do all the albums, so let's do that. We begin in Medivale, Mississauga, Mo uh, Ontario, Canada, for Billy Talent and their sixth album, Crisis of Faith. These guys have been around for almost 30 years, 29 if you want to be pedantic, and I've been a fan of them for... Well, not as long, <laughs> but I am a pretty big fan of them, and yeah, love this album. Uh, their first one in six years, Afraid of Fights, was one of my favourites of 2016. Um, I'm giving this album an A-, minus. it really, yeah, it's just a really good Billy Talent album. Really, really, really good, actually. Um, yeah, a bit more, I will say it's not as consistent, maybe, as Afraid of Fights was, but it's still got a lot of banging tracks, it's still got a lot of complexity to it, as Billy Talent uh, often bring, and I think that's an overlooked thing um, when people think about Billy Talent. Solid performances. Uh, it's the first full album with Jordan Ratbeard Hastings on drums because I don't think Aaron had any involvement because of his illness, which oh god, I can only imagine that's been made worse because of the, the thing which I'm not going to say the name of, but god damn, poor, poor Aaron. I feel really bad for him. But Jordan did a really great job on the drums. Everyone did a really great job on their respective instruments. Ben is still a fantastic punk vocalist. Does not get enough credit. Really solidly uh, put together, good lyrical themes, just about everything you would want from a Belly Talent album and more, so yeah, really good. Then moved to Winnipeg Idiot in Manitoba, Canada for Comeback Hit with their sixth album. I think it's their sixth, let me look. Uh, it's their seventh. I was wrong. Um, but it's their first in five years, so it's also a long gap, and it's titled, here it is, uh, Heavy Steps. I got there eventually. So. Yeah, um, I'm a big Comeback Kid fan. I mean, their album, uh, their 2014 album, Don't Know, was my favourite album of 2014. I liked Outsider a lot, but th back then I wasn't doing top 30s. If I did, that probably would have been on there somewhere. Really like this. Not gonna lie, giving it an A. You know, uh, not one of their longer albums, but it hits fucking hard for, like, their particular brand of hardcore punk. It absolutely slams into you. Really heavy stuff. Really like a lot of the lyrical themes as well. More focused on, like, um, you know, things like disenfranchisement and betrayal and um, things like that. Very different from what they usually do. And didn't really contain as much filler as I think Outsider did, which is one of that album's few issues, because I thought the album was really, really good. I think this one absolutely trumps that. Um, it's the best since I know, Inc., and I've listened to all the band's albums, so I, you know, I know what I'm on about. <laughs> and... Yeah, just if you need some really solid hardcore punk, then Comeback Kids are a really solid hardcore punk band, and they've been this way for a long, long time. So, you know, yeah, solid lyrics, really well performed. It's the first album with a certain member, I don't remember who. I'm gonna look really quick. Um, Chase Brenneman on bass. It's the first album with him, and he absolutely smashes it, so... Yes, and Andrew Gusnevold is still a great vocalist, so... Yeah, listen to this one. It's really great. So we have a bit of an odd story. The first band here are uh, not from Canada. Uh, I think they're from Oakland in California. Kids on a Crime 3 with their debut full-length Fall in Love Not Online, which is actually their first release, uh, like the first sort of album-ish release since, 2011, since the 2011 EP that they dropped, with the name of which I can't remember. They dropped like a couple of singles in the time between, but still like 11 pissing years. And the album's not that long, it's just over about 24 minutes, I think, maybe 24 and a half at a push. I liked it though, you yeah, know, really solid indie, uh, sort of indie noise pop punk thing. Giving it a B plus, really liked how a lot of it played out. It feels very, like, squished together in a way, but like, in a very pleasant way, like a, like a spongy cake, you know, like with extra sponge on it. Um, didn't, did not really take up a lot of time for me, and... I guess that might have been an issue, but I don't know, I was just so enraptured by the charm. I really liked the, you know, the really cutesy and kitschy lyrical themes. thought the performances were solid, there's only three members. By the way, none of which are actually on the cover. I don't know who those people are on the cover. The band has a female member, and she doesn't look like any of the people on the cover. It's fucking weird, but... Yeah, solid production as well. Uh, Slumberland is a really great indie rock label for that, so... Absolutely, the right call to be signed to them uh, to get those to hand uh, to get those to get someone who could handle the production on something like this. And yeah, it's short, so it won't take up enough of your time. I mean, you could probably like listen to it three times 
in the entirety it takes for me to edit this video and put it up on YouTube. Oh, self burn. My cat's doing something adorable. But yeah, maybe give this one a spin. I liked it a lot more than I thought it would. It won't take up a lot of time. It's got really good performances and really nice themes. So yeah, yeah, it's just a really good heartwarming bit of uh, noisy pop. Next up, we move to Hartford, Connecticut for Shadow of Intent and their fourth album, Elegy. Now, this one did technically come out, not this, not the last Friday, but the Friday before that. However, I pushed it forward to last Friday because, you know, I needed something to put it out. I didn't really have much else. In fact, this is the only album to not be released on January the 21st. And it's my second album by Shadow of Intent. I listen to Melancholy, I really like Melancholy, but it took me a while to fully appreciate their particular style of more symphonic lean death course. The band's first album in three years, so it's their longest gap. And this is an early album of the year contender for me. A plus all around. First of all, right, first album with new drummer Bryce Butler, who fucking smashes it. He's so, so good. And oh, it's, it's great. I, I can't really think of a thing I hate about it. Like... If, if um, Kids on Christbury took the took the uh, mantra that less is more, then Shadow of Intent decided that more was more because this album is an hour long, and it does not waste any time at all. It goes so many places. It's so musically complex. Lyrically, it's fucking great too. It's got a lot to say in, in its lyrics. The performances are brilliant. Love how it like manages to fill the hour long length with so many fun things. Great structuring, like perfect structuring, I dare say. And the production is so good. How it adds in the symphonic elements to the really, really heavy stuff. I can't really say much else good about this. Just listen to it. Everyone's great. Uh, Bryce Butler makes a stunning debut on the drums. Fuck, yeah, just listen to Elegy by Shadow of Intent. I, you know, it, I'm fully turned around on these guys. Like, I did sort of like them before, but this is the album that's decided it for me. And finally, we go to the only British band on the list with Leeds, England's own Yard Act and their debut, The Overload. Uh, this was a very anticipated one for this year. Although, is it really anticipated if it comes out in January? I think it's more anticipated if it comes out in the middle of the year. But yeah, um, as it goes, this is a really nice bit of, like, sort of post-punk indie British stuff, you know? Very good vibes of Britpop. Not quite the same good vibes as 2021. And I know a lot of people are going crazy for this album. I'm only giving it a B. The reason I'm only giving it a B is because it sucks now. Um, <laughs> the main reason is partly because I was just reminded so much of Sleaford Mod's last album, and I was like, I don't want these guys to just do a full... Okay, granted the difference is that Sleaford Mod's are more of like a lo-fi hip-hop group, and, you know, um, Yard Act's bring in guitars and stuff, and there's some pretty good instrumental work, but it feels weirdly unstructured in a way that works, because, like, there's no exact, like, verbiage structure with the words, and... Again, that does work for it, but, like, it's such a weird thing. But they've also come up with ways to really nicely execute it. I don't know. I can't really think of many problems I have with this album. I'm just not as crazy about it as a lot of other people seem to be. And, yeah, I'm, there were some parts that didn't land. I did like a lot of the dark humour, but I wish it weren't so... You know, I wish they were more consistent with it. There were some moments in the album that made me laugh. And the song Tall Poppies... Just about made me cry. Not with laughter, like, with actual tears. That is a brilliant story for a brilliant song. Probably one of my favourite songs of the year, if I'm being honest, even though the album is the lowest graded. But considering it's a B, I don't think that's a terrible thing, you know? And I still recommend giving this album a try because it is a really good debut, and I am looking forward to what's next. I'm just, like, not going fully all in just yet, you know? I want to wait a little bit, and usually I do give the benefit of the doubt to a lot of debuting bands, and I am going to give it to Yard Act as well. Uh, this album does have me excited for whatever they do next. And they've got Ernest Charm. Very tongue-in-cheek satire humour. Um, good performances as well. I think that should be pointed out. And really nice production too. So yeah, I think it's worth looking forward to whatever they do next. Whatever that will turn out to be. And that will about do it for another episode of Music of the Week. I mean, I would recommend pretty much everything from this episode, if I'm being honest. This is probably my favourite episode so far of 2022. Um... I, I could just recommend legit all of them, and I do, but the one that you must listen to, even if you're not a super big fan of such a heavy genre, is Elegy by Shadow of Intent. Listen to the album. It's an hour long, yes, so it's going to take a bit of time, but find something to do, or just don't find anything to do, and just focus on the album. It's fucking great, and I cannot recommend it enough. It's definitely an early favourite for me. But I will see you... Yeah, that's, that's my main recommendation, but listen to all of them, because they're all pretty good in their own rights, and... I will see you uh, tomorrow night. Heat of the moment. The pay for you. It's going to be big. And I've got a surprise that only one other person knows about. So, 
I'm looking forward to it. That'll about do it. I can't really think of much else to say. Next video I'll see you for might be a Fight the Night review this weekend. It all depends. But yeah, that's for then. That's for now. As always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.